In this video, we're going to talk about translating between English and math. Now, it's a skill that's going to be really useful throughout all sorts of applied math classes and stuff. Now, all right, let's take a look. Basically, this is the dictionary, if you will, for how do you translate between these two languages, English and math. So in English, if something ever says the word more, like Bob has four more apples than Jim, well, that's just going to be B equals four plus J, right? J plus four, four more. So really the word more translates into a plus sign. Similarly, fewer, if you want to say somebody has three fewer cards than somebody else, you would say that's something minus three. So again, fewer translates to minus. All right, so that's, that's one thing. Another word to know about translating is just, this one you should be familiar with, times. Any, if I were to say that I have eight times as many pennies as somebody else, that would literally be eight multiplied by the number of pennies. So again, a lot of these things seem obvious, but when you see a sentence in English, it's easy to get thrown off. So let's take a look at an example. This sentence in English says, Biden has three fewer than twice as many parking tickets as Sanders. If we wanted to translate that sentence from English into math, what should we do? Well, part of it is just taking ownership over this, saying, you know what, rather than being passive and having the teacher giving you variables and stuff, you're the one who's going to create them and say, you know what, I'm going to say B, I'm, I'm defining this thing called B, and it's the number of parking tickets that Biden has, and I'm going to define this other thing called S, and that's the number of parking tickets that Sanders has. So you've defined these things, all right, so now you can use B and S in an equation however you want to. And how do we want to use them? Well, we want to represent this real world scenario. We want to translate that Biden has three fewer. So three fewer, that's subtraction, right? So whatever it is, minus three. So, so far, Biden has, so Biden, the number of tickets he has equal, right? So what does that equal? Well, some, three fewer than something, right? So whatever that something is, three fewer than it. So, so far, it's like B equals something minus three. And so what is it? It's three fewer than what? Twice as many as Sanders has. Well, whatever Sanders has, twice as many as that's just going to be not S, but 2S. So our final answer here is that B, however many parking tickets Biden has, is, well, twice as many as Sanders has minus three. Three fewer than twice as many, right? So again, that's just the way to start translating between English and math. Another word is the percentage difference between two things. If I were to say that, you know, uh, that the population of this town is 17% higher than the population of this other town, you basically multiply by 1.17. In general, 1 plus r, where r is the percentage difference, where you do the whole decimal thing, where 17% is not really 17, but 0.17. So essentially, 1 plus 0.17 is 1.17, and so that's what you multiply. So let's do an example here. So let's say the example here is that Detroit has a 3% higher unemployment rate than Chicago. All right, so again, first thing we're going to do, we're going to take ownership. We're going to say B, we're going to call a variable D and say that's the unemployment rate of Detroit. We're going to label a variable C, and that's the unemployment rate of Chicago. And we want to represent them, relate them how? because Detroit is 3% higher than Chicago. If you want to say Detroit is, by the way, the word is translates to is equal to, right? So anytime you see the word is, that roughly translates to the equal sign. So Detroit, D equals Detroit is, not equal to Chicago, but 3% higher than Chicago, meaning 1.03 times C. Notice you're multiplying Chicago's thing by a number a little bit bigger than one, right? So it's going to make the number a little bit higher. If you wanted to say that something was like 3% less than something else, then it's one minus that. So in the same context, if there was another city, uh, let's say New York, N, and that was, let's say, 3% fewer, lower than Chicago, or 3% lower than Chicago, then it's one minus 0.03, so 0.97 times Chicago. And again, here, in the end, New York's going to be less than Chicago because it's Chicago times a number less than one. So that's, again, just how you deal with translating percentages. If the sentence in English has something with a percentage, you can translate it into math, 
by using 1 plus r or 1 minus r times the variable. All right. Another thing is uh, the word sort of midway, bet midpoint between two things or the or halfway between two things. So again, this goes by many different words, same as the average of two things. If I were to say that the average of these two people is this, you add them up and divide it by two. And in English, often they'll phrase things like this. Let's say that a sentence in English says, Mark Zuckerberg's income is halfway between Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos. How do you translate that sentence into English? Well, again, we're gonna label these things Z, G, B, or whatever, and we're gonna say, Zuckerberg's income is, so Z equals, what is it? Well, halfway between G and B, so just average them. So literally G plus B divided by two. So that is literally the translation of that. It's you know in between. Now the final thing, and this will sort of segue to the next part of this class, is linear functions. So a linear relationship, the thing that defines a relationship as linear, is that it's changing by the exact same amount every time period or every whatever the X is, right? So unlike something like, you know, the COVID infection rate, which is often growing exponentially, it's not growing by the same amount every day. If something were changing hypothetically by the same amount day after day, that's a linear relationship. And the amount that it changes by each period is what we call the slope in layman's terms. So essentially the slope is the amount that it's changing by each period. And the starting value, whatever you start off with, is what we call B, the intercept. So these are two new words for some people, intercept and slope. Intercept is the starting value. Slope is the amount that you change each period. So with that translation in mind, essentially, you have this thing called MX plus B. And in the next few videos, we're gonna go into more depth of how do you mechanically work with that. But before that, it's important to understand where are you ever going to use this? What real world sentence in English means MX plus B? So let's take a look at an example. Really important real world application here. Rohan has seen 20 episodes of Parks and Rec, and every day he watches seven episodes. So if we wanted to translate that into math, where, you know, the thing you're talking about is how many episodes has he seen, you know, a certain number of days from now, X days from now, how many episodes has he seen? Well, let's see, MX plus B, the slope is seven, right? Each day there's seven new episodes, so seven, and you're starting with 20. So there you go, so seven X plus 20, that line, that MX plus B represents anything that starts off at 20 and increases by seven each period. If something is decreasing each period, then that would be a negative number. So if it was, if somebody were watching three fewer of uh, episodes of something uh, each day, well, how would you even do that? Why would you do that? It's Parks and Rec. But if you were, that would be a negative.